Good day everyone, this is Teacher Abby and for today's video, we're going to talk about problem solving involving arithmetic sequence. Before we move on our discussion, let us have first a review on what we have learned last time. In this activity, you're going to identify whether the given sequence is arithmetic or not. If we have 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, identify if it is an arithmetic or not in only 5 seconds. Start! Okay, time's up. The answer is arithmetic sequence. Since we have a common difference equal to 2, remember, 3 minus 1 is equal to 2, 5 minus 3 is equal to 2, and 7 minus 5 is equal to 2. For number 2, we have the sequence 4, 8, 16, and 32. Now, let us identify whether it is an arithmetic sequence or not. Timer starts now. Okay, time's up. The answer is not arithmetic sequence. If you're going to notice, 8 minus 4 is equal to 4. 16 minus 8, that is equal to 8. And 32 minus 16 is equal to 16. Their differences are not common. Therefore, we can say that this is not an arithmetic sequence. Okay, for our last sequence, we have 12, 7, 2, and negative 3. Is this an arithmetic sequence or not? Timer starts now. Okay, time's up. The answer is arithmetic sequence. 7 minus 12, that will be negative 5. 2 minus 7, that is also equal to negative 5. And negative 3 minus 2, that will be negative 5. Our common difference there is negative 5. So we can say that this is an arithmetic sequence. Last time, we have tackled about arithmetic sequence. By the way, what is an arithmetic sequence? An arithmetic sequence is a sequence wherein every term after the first is obtained by adding a constant called common difference. And remember, to find any term in an arithmetic sequence, use the following rule or formula. We have a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 multiplied by d, wherein our a sub n is the n term, our a sub 1 is the first term, our n is the number of terms, and d is the common difference. Since we already reviewed about arithmetic sequence and its formula, let us try to get or have an example. If we have a sequence 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, together, let us find the 28th term of the sequence. First, our value of n is equal to 20 because we're looking for the 28th term. Our d is equal to 2 since our common difference is equal to 2, which is 3 minus 1 is 2. 5 minus 3 is 2, 7 minus 5 is 2, so as to 9 minus 7 is also equal to 2. Our first term is equal to 1, therefore our a sub 1 will be equal to 1. And now we're going to look for a sub 20 or the 20th term. So using the formula again, a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 multiplied by d, let us substitute the values. So, 
Substituting the values, our a sub n will be a sub 20, our a sub 1 will be 1, our n will be 20, then copy, minus 1, then our d will be equal to 2. So the first thing that we should simplify here is 20 minus 1. And we all know that 20 minus 1 is equal to 19. Then, after simplifying the operation inside the parentheses, which is 20 minus 1, and it will become 19, let us multiply 19 times 2. 19 times 2 is equal to 38, and we are going to copy 1. And 1 plus 38, that will be equal to 39. Therefore, our a sub 20 is equal to 39. Or other way around, our 20th term of the given sequence is 39. Since we already know how to find the value of a term from the arithmetic sequence, we can already identify or apply what you learn on some examples involving problem solving. For example number one, we have the problem, after any surgery, your trainer tells you to return to your jogging program slowly. He suggests jogging for 12 minutes each day for the first week. Each week thereafter, he suggested that you increase the time by 6 minutes per day. Now, how much weeks will it be before you are up to jogging 60 minutes per day? Based on the problem, let us illustrate first. So, we all know that on the first week, we need to jog for 12 minutes a day. Then it was said that after a week, we just need to add 6 minutes accordingly. So, on the second week, we're going to add 6 from 12, that will be 18. Then on the third week, we have 18 minutes and added by 6 minutes again, that will be 24. And the question on the problem is, how about on the 60 minute jogging per day? In what week do we get, we need to get that? So based on the problem, the given R, D, which is equal to 6 minutes, A sub 1 is our first term, which is the first week jogging time, which is 12 minutes a day. Our last term will be 60, since we are six, we're looking for 60 minutes jogging per day and our n is the week in which we are going to attain or have a 60 minutes per day jogging so using the formula we have a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 multiplied by d substituting the values our a sub n will be 60 a sub 1 will be 12 and then we're going to copy n minus 1 since we don't have the value of n and our d is equal to 6. So since we cannot simplify n minus 1, we just multiply first or distribute the value of 6 to n minus 1 by multiplying it 1 by 1. So 6 times n, that will be 6n. And 6 times negative 1, that will be negative 6. So the answer will be 60 is equal to 12 plus 6n minus 6. In this one, we can simplify the numbers. 12 minus 6. 12 minus 6 will be equal to 6 and the rest of the terms will be copied. So, as we can see, we have 60 is equal to 6 plus 6n. We cannot simplify 6 plus 6n and we just need to get the value of n. So, with this, we can simply transpose the value of 6 so, uh, the other side in order for us to isolate the constant numbers. So, transposing a positive 6 to the other side, that will be negative 6. And that will give us 60 minus 6 equal to 6n. 
60 minus 6, that will be 54, which is equal to 6n. And in order for us to get the value of n, we need to divide both sides by 6, since the 6 is the, beside the number or the term n. So, 54 divided by 6, that will be 9, and 6 divided by 6, that will be 1, so n will be left behind. So, the value of our n is 9. Therefore, it will take 9 weeks before you are up to jogging 60 minutes per day. For our example number 2, a brand new car costs 780,000 pesos. As time goes on, its value depreciates by 36,800 pesos per year. What is the value of the car after 8 years? Again, let us illustrate first the problem. So, on the first year, we have the total cost of the car. After one year or the second year, we're going to have the first depreciated value of the car. Then, on the ninth year, we're going to have the depreciated value of the car after eight years. So, based on the problem, our given R, D is equal to negative 36,800. Why is it negative? Since we are looking for the value which is depreciated. So, we just need to put negative there. Our A sub 1 is 780,000 since that is the initial cost of the car. For brand new then our n will be 9 so for the first year then the following 8 years and we're going to look for our a sub 9 or the ninth year of the car after it was been bought so using the formula a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 multiplied by d, we're going to substitute the values that will be a sub 9 is equal to 780,000 plus 9 minus 1 multiplied by negative 36,800. So in this, we can simplify first the operation inside the parentheses which is 9 minus 1. 9 minus 1 will be 8 and the rest of the terms will be copied. So that will be 780,000 plus 8 times negative 36,800. Multiplying 8 times 36, negative 36,800, the value will be negative 294,400. Then, simplifying, 780,000 plus negative 294,400, that will be 486,000. Therefore, the value of the car after 8 years is 486,000 pesos. Since we're done with our example, let us have an activity. In this activity, you're going to answer the problem. After one second, a rocket is 30 feet above the ground. After another second, it is 85 feet above the ground. Then after another second, it is already 140 feet above the ground. If it continues to rise at this rate, how many feet above the ground will the rocket be after 16 seconds? That's all for today. I hope you have learned something. 
If you have questions, you can message me via Facebook Messenger, Abby Mendoza. Thank you for watching!